There are a lot of different directions I could take this video. I still don't really know what I'm gonna call it. I could call it something like, this is the cheapest Windows handheld you can get right now, brand new, which seems clickbaity enough. Or something about how SteamOS never launches with any device other than the Steam Deck, despite Valve claiming that it would be available for others to use. Having something that's this cheap compete directly with the Steam Deck could be really enticing, especially for something that also has the option to have full-blown windows on here and for cheaper than a Steam Deck. Or I could call it something like review bias and, and getting a thing for free because there's a decent amount of that in, in here too. I, I, I didn't get this for free, I, I paid for this. I'm just gonna take you along on the journey with me, strap in, and this is probably gonna be a decently long video. All the way back in 2022, Ein released what I consider to be the best high-end emulation handheld for a long time, the Odin. It was their first product, and it ran on Android. Very soon after the success of that release, they announced the Ein Loki, which would be their Windows-based line. World's most affordable Windows handheld, they called it. And I think they're right. After they announced this, they announced the most SKUs I've ever seen in a handheld. All different types of RAM and storage configurations. There were, there's AMD chipsets, there were Intel chipsets. Just so many it was hard to keep track of. I wanted the absolute cheapest one and some sort of middle tier one. I thought those would be the most interesting, but also I just didn't want to spend a lot of money. I, if, if, I, if I bought every Windows handheld and reviewed it on here, I would be broke. And if you're gonna be spending that much money on a PC handheld, why would you get one of these? Just, just get an Ally or a Legion Go or, or the new MSI that's coming out or whatever. All of these SKUs were so confusing, it completely broke my pre-order. I'm gonna be talking a lot about the buying process of, of this thing. If, if you're not interested in that, you can skip around. I have timestamps on the little scrubber down here. You can just skip ahead. But I think it's important to talk about because if you're interested in anything like this, you're gonna need to go through that process. I think this also brings up the greater problem of pre-orders in general. So many of these things start as crowdfunding campaigns. That can sometimes be a recipe for disaster. But before we get into that, this is a lot to go through. We, we gotta make some coffee. This video is sponsored by Trade Coffee. See what I did here? I 3D printed a little, a little caddy here so that Hannah doesn't yell at me when I leave my milk jugs over here by the sink, and then uh, we get into a huge fight. So I like to, uh, now I put, now everything's nice and neat over here. I pull about three espresso shots a day. The first one is always for Hannah, because uh, if I mess up, she's not gonna notice. You want a flavor? What flavor? Vanilla, b vanilla blonde, a blonde vanilla. What I like about Trade is that <laughs> Trade is a coffee subscription service that allows you to find all different types of nice new coffees without you having to look for it yourself. That's definitely notes of honey walnuts. Trade sources the best local roasters and brings them right to your doorstep. You're gonna have to wait, I'm swamped here. I hate mobile orders. Trade maps your specific preferences to hundreds of different coffee flavor profiles. They use art and science and, and witchcraft and ghouls and ghosts to match the stuff that you like with coffee that you're gonna love. That's all right. Click the link below to get a free bag of roasted to order coffee with select subscriptions. All right, all right, one pup cup. Congratulations. On June 4th of 2022, I pre-ordered both the Loki 256 and the Loki Mini Intel version, neither of which I ended up with. On June 29th of that year, I got an email. The Intel version Loki model has been discontinued and your pre-order will have the ability to get a refund or free upgrade to a Loki Mini Pro. I just said, yes, please. They then updated my order. Over a year goes by and I don't hear anything, but I got a little antsy and I decided to look into where my couple of hundred dollars has been sitting and I realized that it had my old address on the order. So I just responded to that order update from a year prior, said, hey man, uh, can I change my address real quick? And they said, 
You can change your address when you pay the final payment for Loki 256. By the way, there is a Loki Mini Pro Intel in your order, which has been canceled. You can get a refund or upgrade to other device. Please confirm. I changed that Intel version, remember? Yes, it changed to a different Intel version that also doesn't exist anymore. Now, I'm a little mad. I might have been a little rude. I said, that is the second Loki that has been canceled. What other Loki devices are still coming out? Because I want them to tell me what, what I, give me, give me some suggestions. I ended up with the Loki Zero and the Loki Mini Pro. I'm not sure why those are the two that I ended up with. They're barely any different from each other and cost almost about the same. After this, nothing happened for months. And then the devices came out and I, and I saw other people started posting their reviews of, of the thing. People who paid for the device, they, they weren't sent review units, they paid for the thing. So this happens sometimes, sometimes orders get staggered and whatever, and I waited a couple more weeks. And then I finally decided to email back. On October 13th, I emailed them just asking for an update. They hit me back with, sorry, I find that we forget to charge you the difference, $11, on shipping fee. There is shipping fee for one console only. The invoice email has sent, please pay on it, thank you. And then that was followed by a little more back and forth because there was a bunch of website errors that prevented me from paying their stupid $11 for some reason until they finally sent me a direct link to pay them that $11 and everything was fine. I made a silly little tweet about the incident because I thought that $11 shakedown was pretty funny, but also I was a little bit frustrated that it's been over a year and I hadn't heard anything about these devices. If I didn't say anything, I would have just never gotten it. I pre-ordered two devices, other people are getting theirs and I'm not getting mine due to a plethora of technical errors on their end and also that, that weird skew changing. It was one of the most frustrating buying experiences that I've ever had and it's changed the way that I've thought about doing these sorts of reviews. I like to make these videos as a very anecdotal story based on my experiences with a product or device so that I can inform potential buyers about what they might experience without all the bull I sometimes do technical breakdowns if I'm interested enough, but for the most part, it's just me fucking around with something to give you an idea of what a real world experience with this thing would look like. It turns out that one of the major experiences that I've been missing when reviewing these things is the buying process. And sometimes, that's just gonna be unavoidable because sometimes I get offered these things early and for free and that would greatly benefit the video if I could get it out earlier. And also, these things are expensive. I just don't wanna pay for it. I'm not gonna say no to that, but it is definitely something I have to consider and convey to you that I didn't go through that experience if that ever happens. Some people think that getting given a device for free for review contributes to some sort of inherent bias. I don't think that, I think I've proven that in some of my previous videos. However, it's definitely important to specify because the experience of the reviewer might be different from just a general consumer. For example, Asus sent me an ally that was all set up already, so I didn't have to go through the whole Windows setup process. That's definitely a different experience than what a consumer walking into Best Buy would experience. What getting a free review unit definitely does do is silence any issues that might arise when a consumer is going through that buying process. This is something that I wanna pay closer attention to in the future wherever I can. For what it's worth, I very recently reviewed the Ida Odin 2, which is another one of their devices. And before that video, I put out a poll asking if anybody else has had any issues purchasing from Ein, and the responses were an overwhelming no. Not a single person had any stories of having any issues with the buying process of, of an Ein product. This seemed to have been a unique problem specific to me. One day after that tweet about that $11 shakedown, I received an email from a different person at Ein. It turns out, Somebody took my tweet and posted it in the Ein Discord, then somebody at Ein saw it and looked through the orders, found my name and traced it back to me and found my email and reached out apologizing and offering me an Odin 2 Pro review unit. That's completely different than any of the issues that I had, but I said, yeah, sure, whatever. All three devices showed up just a few days later. And I 
think what makes me so mad about this whole thing is that I don't think this issue would have been resolved at all if I didn't tweet about it. I don't like pulling the, do you know who I am card? You know, that wasn't my intention at all. I didn't think anybody at Ein would see my tweet or even care about it. I wanna be treated as a regular consumer, not as an influencer, because I want to experience the product just like a consumer can, so I can make a video about that whole experience. It's also worth noting that I pre-ordered the Ein Odin 2 Max myself. And just like a day or two after I got all those other devices, I got that one right at my doorstep. So now I'm swimming in Eins. <laughs> oh my God, what? Oh my God, is this for real? What is that? This is the Ein something. Anyway, I finally got around to messing around with the Ein Loki Zero. They also sent me the Ein Loki Mini Pro because I, I bought that too, which I never took out of the box. They seem to be extremely similar in power and price. And the real nail in the coffin is that they already discontinued the Loki Mini Pro. It's not even on their website anymore. I really got this thing for no fucking reason at all. And I think I was so confused and frustrated because this was like the third time I had to change my order that I just said, make it the comparable version. Whatever the comparable version is, just get me that. Meanwhile, I already had the Loki Zero, which is the comparable version. They just, oh, they just, fucking just, just basically made me get the AMD version of this, which is the same goddamn thing. This Loki Zero is the cheapest Windows handheld you can get your hands on right now. It's just $250, and at the time of writing, it's just $224 on sale. You might be asking yourself, if it's so cheap, what are you gonna be playing on here? Chips Challenge, and, that, and that's about it. Remember, remember that? Remember Chips Challenge? Most of the games that I threw its way failed miserably, which was disappointing, but it doesn't mean it's not useful. Because again, it's $224 for a whole ass Windows handheld. As much as I crap on Windows for having a cumbersome UI for a handheld form factor, there's no denying the versatility of Windows. I love Android for how easy it is to put emulators on Android handhelds. But it's just as easy, if not easier, to do it on a Windows handheld because you have all of Windows to work with. You're gonna have similar emulation performance with this thing that you would on a similarly priced like Retroid. GameCube will be just fine on here, if, if not a little better. I wouldn't expect anything more than that. Oof. The Loki Zero has four gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, a six inch 1080p 60 Hertz IPS display, Wi-Fi 5, and a monster AMD 3050E processor that can get you a whopping 317 on the 3D Mark benchmark. To give you some perspective, my Asus ROG Ally got just about 3000. The Loki Zero, is not a hallmark of power. So you'll maybe be surprised to know that none of the cool shit ran on here. Resident Evil 4 wouldn't run. Ghostwire crashed immediately. So did Pal World. Neon White did run, but not, not well. Basically no 3D game would even load on here. Sonic Superstars also ran, but not well. I, I just, I wouldn't want to play like this. There's probably a lot of tweaks you can do to get some of this stuff running, drop the resolution down a lot, drop the frame rate down, maybe get some other going on in there, but I don't gotta do that with any of my other devices. I'm not gonna do that with this. Also, in my experience, tweaking around with stuff like that doesn't make it run great. Just makes things run a little slightly better. You're, you're compromising a lot there. So far, not a very glowing endorsement, but games like Celeste, and even Gravity Circuit, not very demanding 2D indie games, they ran great on here. This shouldn't really be that impressive. Celeste runs fine on even a cheap Android phone, but it is kind of impressive still for a device that's only $224. Having something this cheap that has full-fledged windows on it 
can be pretty cool. I'm a big fan of these types of indie games. Sure, you can get a Switch and play everything on there. That's where I used to play all of these types of games. But if the Steam Deck has taught me anything, it's that these types of games, like for example, Gravity Circuit, release first on Steam usually. So you could be playing these games on something like this, potentially months before you would be able to play them on Switch. It's a very useful device in that regard, but you just always have to keep in mind that a game that you want might not necessarily run on here. A device like an Asus Ally or a Steam Deck or even a Switch might be a more reasonable investment, but those are all also more expensive. You'll have to save up for those, unless you count a Switch Lite. This Loki Zero is cool for a very specific use case. I would almost never recommend it to anyone. If you are interested in playing low-powered PC games on a handheld, I shouldn't even have to recommend it to you. You should just know by now that this is the device for you. You will also have to consider the resources required for every future game that comes out. You're gonna be limited a little bit. Now, I can't talk about this device without talking about Steam OS. This can be a whole video in, in itself. One very interesting use case for this thing is just straight up putting Steam OS on here. This isn't something that I was even interested in or I ever even wanted to do, but a, a lot of people were suggesting it for this device specifically. People are putting Chimera OS on here and on similar devices, which is a custom version of Steam OS for devices like this. It was honestly not hard to put on here at, at all. I thought it was gonna be a huge pain in the ass and it was not. I don't even think that I followed a tutorial that was specific for this device. I did have to put it on a micro SD card just so I wouldn't harm the Windows installation on here. So that might affect some performance, but after all was said and done, I was very impressed. I love SteamOS on the Steam Deck, and this is virtually the same exact experience. It's a full on Linux OS, so you will have the same compatibility issues that an actual Steam Deck would have, but also some of the same compatibility benefits. Basically, Celeste was the only game that I could get on here. And I didn't really have a lot of space on the micro SD card, but it ran fantastic, just as good as it did on Windows. And I played it for a decent amount of a plane ride I just took because my Lenovo Legion Go was fucking dead from playing Prince of Persia and the outlets on the plane didn't work. But Chimera OS didn't help any of the games that wouldn't load on straight up Windows. Power World didn't work. Sonic Superstars straight up wouldn't load. Gravity Circuit wouldn't load for some reason. It gave me this weird error. There should not be a reason for that game to, to not load. But I like the idea of Steam OS being on here. It's a crapshoot if a game will work or not, but it basically put a Steam Deck in my hand for half the price of a Steam Deck, which brings up a lot more questions. Here's another tangent to make this video way longer than it needs to be. When the Steam Deck originally came out, Valve claimed that they would allow other companies to release Steam OS on their own hardware. This would be similar to those Steam machines from many moons ago. And when I first heard that news, I thought, oh no, because everyone knows just how well those Steam machines turned out. Well, we've seen many Steam Deck competitors, but they're all Windows based. So, so why no Steam OS based devices? There's the Anbernic Win 600, which released with Windows, but Ambernic on their website does have a Steam OS distribution that you can install yourself. That's about the closest we've gotten. Nothing that ships with it right out of the box. Recently, Aya Neo announced the Aya Neo Next Lite, a super cheap $299 Steam OS based device. Wait, 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 hold on. Hollow ISO based device. They, they redacted their original post. A cheaper competitor to the Steam Deck sounds awesome. Finally, a device shipping with Steam OS. I mean, Hollow ISO. What is Hollow ISO anyway? Hollow ISO attempts to bring the Steam Deck's Steam OS Hollow redistribution into a generic installable format and provide a close to official Steam OS experience. Why all that and why not just Steam OS? Isn't Steam OS open source? It, it turns out 
it's not entirely open source. According to Valve's own website, the Steam client is proprietary software. This, this is the thing that you use to, to buy the games, you know, you know the whole, the, the meat of it. In order to include SteamOS on your device that you're trying to sell, you need a license from Valve, which might not be so easy to get. Without this license, you absolutely cannot use the Steam symbol or terms like Steam OS in any of your commercial communication. Well, that explains Aya Neo's redaction. I love the idea of a Steam OS based handheld that's not made by Valve. Getting a cheaper, smaller, more comfortable gaming experience sounds awesome and competition is always great for us consumers. I'm rooting for Aya Neo here, but this project is in its very early stages and I think it's entirely possible that they get a cease and desist before this thing even makes it to the pre-order stage, which is most likely why the Ein Loki doesn't have any uh, official options for Steam OS on here. It didn't ship with it or anything. The Ambernic Win 600 has an official option, but uh, Ambernic just does not give up. The best option is still probably to just have Steam set to big picture mode by default because that will get you the best compatibility with the best UI. But if a device launches with Steam OS, it'll be optimized for that. And in theory, games will run great on that hardware. Steam OS could potentially get low powered hardware to run games great, just like it does on the Steam Deck. But until then, it's just kind of a fun thing to mess around with. On the Loki Zero, Steam OS, or, or I mean Chimera OS, wasn't too hard to put on here. This thing notably does not play nice with my Thunderbolt 4 docks. I had to use a dongle to get Chimera OS on here, but it was simple enough. After getting it on here though, you have to boot into the BIOS in order to switch boot options. In order to do that, you need to turn the unit on while pressing these two bottom function buttons at the same time. Then you need an actual keyboard to navigate the BIOS. When I was on a plane, I obviously didn't have a keyboard. Luckily, you can set Windows to boot into a sort of recovery mode and pick your boot options from there. Again, Chimera OS is just a fun thing to mess around with. I would still just recommend Steam in big picture mode on Windows for the best compatibility. We went through a whole journey in this video. I love the idea of cheap Windows handhelds. I would love Steam OS to be seen in whatever iteration it could be seen in on future Windows handhelds. When I first purchased this thing, I resented it. When I actually got my hands on it and I tried games on it for the first time, I was grossed out by it. But after tinkering a bit and remembering that it was only $224, I actually kind of really like it. I would still recommend saving up for something with a bit more juice, a cheap Steam Deck, or even the base Asus Ally that's frequently on sale. But when you compare the Loki Zero to other handhelds that I've covered on this channel in the same price point, it starts to look more and more enticing. I do like Android for emulation, but that's because Windows is usually so expensive. The Windows UI is terrible, but it does give you a lot of flexibility. And with Emu Deck available for it now, it suddenly seems like a decent option against a Retroid or an Ambernic. Emudeck also has an installer for Chimera OS. And I heard emulators might run better on there too. And let's not forget, this thing can play PC games too. As long as they can run on what, what is essentially like what, 10 or 15 year old hardware? So what do you guys think about all of the things we talked about here? What do you think about uh, us reviewers getting stuff for free and, and, and talking about it? What do you think about the Ein Loki Zero specifically? Do you think it's a, it, it's, it's a decent deal? Are there use cases for this that I haven't thought of that would make it a little more interesting to me? What do you think about Steam OS and Chimera OS and all of that stuff? Leave it in the comments below. Add me on Twitter, any and all this other social media garbage. If I found out a lot more about Steam OS distributions, Maybe I can make a whole video on that. Thank you Trade for helping sponsor this video. They are maybe my favorite sponsor because I use them every single day, multiple times a day. And I was a subscriber even before they sponsored this video. Also check out twitch.tv slash Wolfden. I stream there all of the time. I streamed messing around with this thing. And that's where somebody gave me that chips challenge joke. 
and I just stole it right from them. I'm so sorry. But the most important thing that you can do to help support us right here is just subscribe and share this video with a friend. A friend who is interested in a PC handheld, but doesn't want to spend too much money. Thank you very much. Have yourself a good week. See you later.